Uh, our next speaker has been doing testing since 2005. His normal working day also contains some application development and various operations related things in addition to testing. Please welcome onto the stage Juho Saarinen. Hello. I'm going to talk about thing that was mentioned today, I think at least twice. I think Pekka mentioned this and then... No, it came. Uh, and it was mentioned also at the presentation. So about the Robot Frameworks remote library and with demos. And actually originally I was going to talk only about running Robot Framework uh, at the cloud serverlessly. But that sound, uh, sounded uh, too narrow for this audience, so I changed it kind of a bit more generic. But this could also be called testing with microservices serverlessly. And the remote library is kind of key part for this. But to beginning, uh, go first going to tell a bit who I am, more, maybe more than was presented. Uh, then some basics about the remote library, uh, why and how you want to use remote library, and then the demos. And because the remote library is not the only possibility to run um, kind of test cases remotely from robot, I'm going to mention a couple other options which are also in use. And then of course, as normal, hopefully time for questions and some answers. But as I said, doing testing since 2005 uh, and consultant since 2007. Uh, and yeah, last year there were some logos already uh, at presentation and after that four more uh, logos at the uh, right side. And also uh, kind of came accidentally or not so accidentally uh, develop a maintainer for the JavaLib core uh, robot framework Maven plugin and lately also for the JRobot remote server. Yeah, so, but now about topic itself, not about me. So, remote library is basically techy talking XML RPC interface for the robot framework and between robot framework and the libraries. So basically, Robot Framework feeds data in, the XML RPC library uh, handles that it's in correct format and XML, and then at the receiving end, so basically at library side, it's uh, 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 not decrypted, but uh, unmarshaled or whatever term is wanted to use back to the uh, target code or target uh, codes uh, types, and then it's just called methods. Uh, and depending on language, how it's done at the compiled languages like Java and Golang, it's reflection and Python and JavaScript just more directly, let's say. Uh, and the, as I said, the client side, so robot framework side has been there for ages and at the server side, so library side, there is implementation for multiple different languages. So basically you can just choose what language you want to use and are, or want, want to use or are kind of uh, good enough for to create libraries and just take the uh, remote library or remote server, XML RPC server implementation, which handles the thing. So you can just write basically normal functions, normal methods, normal code with the language you like. Uh, so why to use it then? As said, you can use any language. Any, of course, can be said any, but still, there is quite many implementations for the remote servers, so you don't have to start first implementing the XML RPC interface, etc. And then you can get behind the firewall. Uh, one example, for example, Kubernetes cluster, where you run your database and application at the same namespace and you have only ingress access there, so 80 or 443 ports. So if you want to check something from the database, uh, well, you are not. And this just offers one possibility. Somebody might say there's 
might be some security issues because by default this uh, remote library is not authenticated, but that's other talk. Now it just works and testers are happy and things are working. Uh, then you can also use it to hide credentials. Again, as said, there is no authentication for the XML RPC library uh, or servers, which I have seen. So you can hide credentials and offer all who can access to the endpoint, access to the system it's accessing. For example, database. And there is, of course, demos about that. But the most interesting part, which actually I started to think when uh, seeing this remote library and thinking it more, is kind of library as a service uh, offering or possibility. So basically, we can have uh, automators or uh, testers who do test cases, and they know that, OK, these are the definitions of the libraries, but they don't have to, uh, for example, struggle with Oracle drivers for the operating system. They are running the test, or if new testers come, there is not kind of long list of install this, 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 and remember that this has to be this version because we're using this database. We can just offer, okay, this is the, uh, for example, XML documentation of the keywords just loaded in your IDE and make the test cases. And maybe this is the endpoint of the library itself. And things just work. Uh, there are a couple of other things. The UI testing was mentioned a couple of times already. And the kind of first time when I had to uh, look more closely about the remote library was this UI testing with SQL thing. Because when you run UI tests or web uh, desktop application test with SQL, if you move mouse a bit, it fails. If you accidentally get some notifications during the test, it fails. Uh, if the screensaver goes on, it fails. If machine goes to sleep, it fails, etc. So we want to have something more robust and also something that is CI capable because the screen is quite problematic, especially if not using Linux. So that's one thing that remote library helps. And the dependency handling actually was mentioned already that we can hide the burden of specific versions or specific propriety tools behind the uh, library itself. So tester can just test. But yeah, theory was there, and we have plenty of time with demos, which is, I think, the more interesting part. Uh, the first part, as I mentioned, this can be used with multiple languages, so just basic data handling, calling, uh, using the same test case, calling it uh, four different uh, uh, remote libraries, and getting results. So, and to be kind of make things simple, I have just made a bit cheating, so running all those remote libraries in containers, so I don't have to uh, worry about things so much. So first starting the four different servers for four different languages, and then getting uh, some failures for the actually Java. Uh, because the thing is that Java is, of course, slow, and I didn't implement here any uh, weightings, for example. So, obviously, Java server was not started before the test was uh, run. So, just checking the... Just checking the Java test again, and now it passes. So just because Java is slowest one of those four to start, uh, it failed. And we can check that uh, for the report that, of course, you can think, hey, there was just one endpoint called or we were in just using single um, kind of single test here. But to be shown, the test that we were running was this. Yeah, I think it's big enough. So 
we input the server and port as variables uh, when running. And as you see, all of these four test runs uh, are using different servers, so Golang or Go, uh, Java, JavaScript, and Python, and storing reports to uh, language-specific files. Oh, sorry, directories. And for example, when checking the, uh, not the XML is not necessarily the nicest one to read, but for Golang, for example, we are getting the image from the server, and the image is not the same directory. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. No, some thing that forgot, was forgotten to, it actually stores the, uh, this image the same. So last one I ran was Java, so Java image is here. And of course, if running the Golang one, dun, 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 dun. and then I should have here image that was not here. Well, demo effects happened, and that, that's normal. <laughs> but, the, but, but the main thing is that there was four different language implementation of the servers, and all of those were basically, the test cases were passing without any change to the test case itself, because the server were, servers were taken as an argument. And then, of course, one thing, for example, why, if, if you're a kind of person that enjoys seeing small uh, Docker uh, uh, Docker images. Then I think this is something that you actually want to see more often. I'm not sure how many of you is familiar with the, all of these four languages. Okay, how many of you is familiar with Go? I kind of uh, <laughs> guess this thing. <laughs> but the main thing with this is that I, I'm not able to type correctly, or forgetting things here. The nicest thing I would say is here. So we have, yeah, Java, half gigabyte. <laughs> uh, we have Python, yeah, about 100 megabytes. We have JavaScript, about 80 megabytes. We have Golang, 10 megabytes. It's just, of course, does it matter? No. Is it nice? Yes. And also it's quite nice to write, but that can, can be kind of at the conference talk about which language to use and what should be learned. But yeah, that's about the basic data handling. So basically, the XML APC library handled the thing that uh, it took, for example, the file uh, to, uh, as a uh, byte array, array uh, transformed it to base64, send it over the, uh, e the XML message to the uh, library side, the library side then change this uh, base64 to byte array again, and then code use it, use it as kind of normal file. And, but other kind of formats are of course much simpler because they are already kind of text. But the XML PC doesn't lose the uh, type. It includes a type at the message. Yeah. So the more, the UI testing, as mentioned, it's kind of hard, annoying, to do because it reserves the machine. So why not to do it with the remote library? So first starting the uh, server, which has actually no VNC, so we can see that, okay, we have here uh, Linux desktop available. Then what we can do, we can run tests. And these tests are not nice because they are asleep, because I want to just show, show things. So now it starts here remotely. Dun, 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 dun. It opens the application, and then it sleeps, I think, 20, uh, 10 or 20 seconds. So there's time to move between the windows. And then when the sleep is gone, all passes. So normal thing. And again, kind of to show that this is not cheating, we can run the same thing again, wait that application appears, and then close it. 
And now, when this sleep just goes on and on, uh, it starts to execute things. And now, because the application is not there, of course, things are failing, except something. But there is some, some things with this uh, Java FX library that might not, or that test was not checking the application itself, but something else. But yeah, so just the UI testing without kind of worrying that, okay, I don't touch computer except so much that the screen saver is not going on. And then we can stop the server so there is no uh, port reserved for the next tests. Uh, and yeah, then this dependence, as I said, those who know Oracle know that it's kind of hard to get the, if you're not, if you're using Oracle and not Java, it's quite hard to get the Oracle things working because of property things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and the Python DB library is quite fine if you have the Oracle drivers there, and that's also one possibility. So we are basically making uh, this. Uh, this is a bit simpler file. So basically, we are starting Oracle database and other container containing this uh, uh, library, which it's just kind of in way root to the bar. But this also shows the thing that I was mentioning at the beginning. We go kind of bypass the firewall because, as you see, the Oracle is not opened to the host itself. It's only available inside this uh, uh, Docker container network. And now, when it sta starts, it takes a bit while because, because of uh, yeah, Oracle. And waiting to, yeah, starting, nice. And still waiting. And now it started uh, successfully. So now what I can do, just same as previously, running robot tests and as you see, we, we have the person table available, and then we can kind of make some such simple things, but the database had person table momentarily, and then we dropped that off. Just to show that this is how things work. And just, again, shutting it down so the computer might be a bit faster. Uh, yeah, and then, this cloud thing. So libraries as a service. Uh, here we have kind of this kind of trying things uh, thingy that is actually running at Google App Engine. So basically we have their uh, Python app, uh, Flask application that offers possibly to run tests. So when I run single test and hope that there is no demo effect and or anything, network is there. Uh, it basically starts executing the robot framework test that is available at the cloud storage. So S3 for those who don't know Google, but know AWS. Uh, and then it runs the test and then makes some visualization and stuff. Uh, and then also, as you see, there it's a run, which at the UTC time, then I also same time generate the logs, of course, and also this robot framework metrics page. So it can be seen that, okay, these tests were run and, and so on. Uh, but interesting part is, hey, okay, now something happened. There's failures. Hmm, protocol, uh, protocol error. Yeah, that sounds bad. File not found error. Yeah, that's okay because the server that was deployed doesn't, oh, sorry, this runner server doesn't have the images right to uh, send, so capture.png. And there's other protocol error. What might be the thing? But now, tester basically knows, okay, maybe tests are okay. So somebody else is problem to fix the, uh, this uh, library itself. And, oh, we are not running the latest version. There are some uh, Golang things latent. But Let's just take the latest version to use. As you see, there's a bit difference of size also. 
and 23 refreshes. Now we can make the rerunning of the thing, just getting the ID. Yeah, things are run. Yeah, there are runs, and then if we check logs, hey, the last one which was, has this protocol error was okay. And yeah, of course, it can't write the files because it was trying to write it outside the temp, which is, this is Google App Engine thing. Yeah, but as I said, that's, those are not the only possibilities to remote things. Selenium, of course, has Selenium grid. I think you are quite familiar with that one. Or then you can make custom remote calls. The thing about custom remote calls, why would you use those, is that the testers are more, they like more writing a file usage directly instead of, instead of having first reading the file and then sending it or then handling it. So just, just kind of the usability thing. So that was it. The presentation is going to be shared at some point, so that's why the links are there. Uh, those two, the demos and the error server were not at my repo uh, this morning, but I just changed those public, so they are also there. And as you see, my name, just going to my uh, GitHub account is quite sufficient. So now the questions. All right, questions? Was there a hand? No, <laughs> just a face palm. There you go. Hey. Hi. Um, you were mentioning custom remote calls. Uh, rather than asking a question, I wanted to give another example where that came very handy. Uh, I needed to check certificates for Java, Firefox on Windows and Linux platforms. And with a custom keyword, you could encapsulate and say, hey, I want to have that certificate, give me back the thumbprint, and you could have a single uh, test suite for all those platforms. Yes, as, as and actually also re related to this crypto library yesterday, using these, combining these two would be quite efficient because then the private key is at a single place. Of course, it might require this implementation of uh, some authentication, but that's other thing. More questions? Then I think uh, it's... Just yeah. quickly, just when doing this uh, presentation, I thought it was simple to make the demos, but this is my one month pull requests at the GitHub. And as you see, pull request towards the JS remote server, pull request towards JRobot remote server, and pull request towards Golang remote server. So yes, it's quite old, but still, well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I figured out issues with a node robot remote with actual version of uh, robot framework yeah, yeah. since the, what was it? The, there was w one more thing added in the, the plugin yeah. API, right? That yeah, ac actually the thing was that. Uh, it was the type, type hints, right? Type hints make, make issues, I think. Uh, no, it was documentation. It crashes the whole thing. Yeah. Asking for uh, documentation. <laughs> so. Right. So this is also just waiting, kind of thing. Uh, yeah. And that's why the demos, if you, check, if you want to check those, there are overrides, for example, Go dependencies, and also this notice from, from my own uh, repository. But you can check the demos there and then ask questions if you have any. And I'll be available today at the after party and tomorrow at Sprints. Okay. Thank you, Juho. Thank you.